Right, Connor Cathol, episode number 10. I'm joined on the show with uh, the founder and CEO of Green Heat Sea Liquids. They're a company we've been doing business with for a while. You have to excuse the noise. We've got our staff party and we're doing it from my kitchen, which is an unorthodox place to do it, I'm sure. Um, but Steve's joining us and uh, we wanted to talk to Steve today about his background, his origins, how he got into uh, the e-cigarette industry and, uh, and what his predictions are for the future. Steve, thanks for coming on. So that's very, Hi, uh, welcome very civil. Oh, how do you do? <laughs> hello, hello. To you too. hello. Yes. Okay, hello. so uh, tell me about your background. What did you do before vaping? Uh, oh, crikey. So I had a decorating company, um, which I got rid of to become a full-time vapist, which was a, a flavorist, by the way, not a vapist, um, <laughs> which was a, a risky decision. But yeah, no. So um, yeah, I sort of specialised in the more creative sort of like national trust were like my sort of clients so it's more sort of not just slapping some paint on the wall it was what was the first job you did as a kid as a child yeah what you mean like out of school yeah i mean obviously running your own business is entrepreneurial isn't it but what made you go from um why don't you go and work in an office um what did you do as a kid? i've always been quite a creative guy so i think my first job obviously i went to college to, to study um electronics believe it or not because i wanted to be a sound engineer so obviously, the natural progression to be a sound engineer is to do an electronics course. <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah, that's what I did. Um, but my first <laughs> job, what was my first job? I think it was packing fruit. That was like a summertime thing. Yeah. Um, oh, then I was a forklift driver. Um, so you got your ticket? I, well, it's probably va not validated anymore. Oh. <laughs> was it ever validated? Or yes, yes, yes. I did, I did a little course. But yeah, I was a forklift driver. Um, then I sort of, my dad was a painter, so I kind of dipped my toes into decorating, but we had very different ideas about painting where he would want to throw shit at a wall, where I wanted to make, it look nice, make, right? make things look nice. So how did you go from doing that to end up uh, making I was also a DJ as well, I was a, a full-time <laughs> DJ and radio, what do you call it, presenter. Um, so yeah, I've always been sort of creative. Um, so what made you go right? I'm I'm painting walls. I'm DJing. I'm uh, I'm casanovering ladies at the weekends down at Chicago Rock. <laughs> and go. I'm going to start making e-liquids. Uh, well, it's probably about. I've been vaping for. I reckon six years. It's got to be six. What, what are we in 2018, aren't we? Yeah, I reckon about six years I've been vaping for. And when I started out, it was 50/50 um, liquids. 36 milligram nicotine was a norm. 36 milligram. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then, and then, and Those then, are the days. I know, then, then this <laughs> revolutionary atomizer came out called the K Fun Light. I remember the K Fun. And when it came out, it even had a little bit of paper in the box that said, We recommend you go down a nick level. And at that the was kind of it. Was that 24 I was, mg? I was an 18 milligram vapor when I bought that. And I, and I remember building it and then. Yeah, Nick Rush. Do you know what, that was such a <laughs> it broken your weight. But the annoyance, did you used to have to unscrew, you have to use to carry around a screwdriver to unscrew a little hole. In the oh, to fill it? To fill it up with. And the original one would leak everywhere as well. Yeah, yeah, it? you had to unscrew it, and then if you were, if you had to unscrew it, you had to carry around a screwdriver everywhere you went, just so you could fill up your, your tank. Just put them, hold, keep hold of this funny little screw, fill it up, and then as soon as you do that, you turn it back upside down again, it would just leak everywhere. Leak its guts everywhere. But the flavour was, was oh, worth it. Too. Before you know it, this, this sort of sub ohm trend had come into to, to play, and then the American juices sort of started kicking off over here. Now, the thing is, you, you've gone from being a 1.5 ohm vapour to like, a 0 0.8. Can you get a drink while you're talking about this? Oh, I have a beer here. Your beer here? Can we get another beer? Can we get a couple of beers to the table, please? Cause like, uh, we'll go for some Cause Light. It's not a product promo. <laughs> it's the only beer we got, really, that old brew dog. Although we would like, we, if you want to send a case. There's a beauty of doing a uh, podcast <laughs> from your own kitchen, nice. you can get some service. Got some crisps, but I don't think that'll be the greatest thing to be uh, munching down a microphone. No. But yeah, oh, so we've gone to that. So American juice has become high VG, should I say. High VG juices became sort of the thing. And the Americans were doing it, but we hadn't really caught up there. Um, so, so the import and everything, you're looking at like nearly 20 quid for 30 mils of oh, perfect. American juice. Good man, Rob. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what got me into it. It was like, well, I'm not spending a score on, on a day's worth of vaping. And I've always been a bit of a flavour wanker. So I thought, well, I'll have a go at myself. Yeah. And then um, I sort of done it, and then a few friends were like, oh, that's really nice. And you just think they're saying it because they want free liquid. 
but before you know it, it was. Uh, Your mum says your work's great. Then, yeah, yeah. So my mum always said it. I had a face I, for radio. Yeah, yeah. So what was the first liquid you made? Well, I got I got addicted to. Uh, and he's one of my heroes, actually, by the way. Uh, uh, a man, a flavourist called uh, Philippe Rock, a uh, French guy. And he's heavily involved. My God, yeah, that's a name you haven't heard for a while now. Yeah, well, it? what he did is he he um, he was into like micro brewing. So companies would pay him to make like your fancy craft hours, etc. And then um, he was paid by a company called Animal. Um, you know, A N M L. Yeah, yeah. And, no, and he all, devised yeah. a couple of flavours, and one of them was called Looper. Oh, and so it was. I remember Looper? And it yeah. was it was Fruit Loops. Like the the, the flavour profile was the milk at the bottom of a bowl of Fruit Loops. Yeah. And I baked this shit. And it was, um, and it was just like wow, and, uh, you know. Yeah. And, and I was doing sixteen pound a day or seventeen quid a day on that, so I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to have a go at it. And and I think it was forty seven variations that I start, you know, forty seven variations. So I was happy with a version of it. So that was like the first lip I ever done. And, and even even at the end, I was I was happy with it, but it was no animal lube. I mean, Philly Rock, he he's not just he's just not just using other people's flavourings. He's got a you know he's a Traditional flavorist, he's got, he can make flavoring. So what would you say to people that say um, you know, all e-liquids are the same? You know, there's you know, obviously there's a lot of there's a lot of um, cheap liquids out in the market, isn't there? There's a lot of people going for cheap. Um, I know you very much. You have the approach that not all e-liquids are made the same. No, hell no, no. I mean, you got you got to think. Vaping initially, um, it came out of nowhere, and we're using food flavorings essentially. Yep. So you know, like they're used for confectionery. Um, so everybody was just using Capella. TPA and Flavor West, and there's, there's nothing. I'm not slagging you guys off. I love love their flavors. Um, there's nothing wrong with them, but there's only so many variations. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that's what's happened. It's been like, um, well, it's a shame. TPD has been <coughs> has been a bit of a pain in the ass, really, because um, you've got a lot of flavor houses, like micro flavor houses, that have come along and they're making flavors specifically for for vaping. Um, and the problem is, as you know, micro means it's made in yeah, a smaller scale, environment, yeah. so and, and someone's putting love into these flavours, so not just taking not your generic whatever. So that comes with a premium cost. Now pre TPD, people were used to paying like around thirteen pounds for thirty mil. But let's not forget as well, people were using a lot more sensible devices back then. Yeah, you know, true. Like vaping sixty mil a day is it's insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, I go through an eight mil, ten mil squonk bottle easily in a, in a few oh, hours. Yeah. I mean, what you what you what you stole in there is a filthy sandwich by Green. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, you know, I mean, that's like that's the Haku Vena, and that's like a flavour atomizer. So technically, I think you've got like a 0.5 ohm coil in there. So that's, Lovely, really nice. Mm. The kit, the liquid's good too. Don't worry. <laughs> it's, it's, it's desserty, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's nice. The um, evolution of e-liquids. There's loads of cheap stuff out there. Where do you see it going next year? Do you think it's going to be? Um, do you think it's going to be some interesting stuff? It's going to change. How's it going to be? What do you think? Pressure. Well, my, my, it's it's a it's a quite a tough question actually, because I thought with with the TPD regulation coming in, not that I agreed with it, but it was ten mil bottle sizes, two mil. Is it two mil tanks, wasn't it? Two mil tanks. Ten mil bottle size. So I thought we might see some sensible vaping coming back into play. You know, no, no offence, I, I sub home as well. I've got no problem with it. But, you know, I thought it might go... For the purpose of those who listen to the podcast, Green is waving a device at a camera that's no longer running, so... Yeah. Oh, we not, we not. <laughs> our camera, our camera's Video's died. Gone. This is this is the beauty of trying Strictly to do a, a video cast from your own house. <laughs> Probably is uh, recording now. <laughs> it's just streaming instead. So anyway, where were we? Uh, uh, the change of change of e liquid. So yeah, so I, I thought there was going to be common sense would prevail a little bit more, um, and I thought we were going to take it down a little bit. You know, um, high nicotine, 50-50 liquids, more about the flavours, but that hasn't really happened. Things I've I, I mean, know, yeah. I've I've gone from you know I started off. I mean, I started vaping. Those of you who know my story, um, I. Started the company because I, I bought a 140 pound e cig kit from America in 2011. Thought that was the future. I thought it was incredible. I quit smoking that way. It was, it was amazing. It's sort of it's basically a cig like what you probably get for a five an hour from a petrol station. But, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've you know I've done the whole system. I've done the sub ohms. I've got you know a squonk mod. But more and more recently now, I'm going back to sort of restricted airflow. Like I, I found an old uh, not XQ, Q, Q box, an old smock Q box. I thought it was quite cute. We salvaged it in the shop, and I've been putting 50/50 in there. Mm. So I see a lot more of people who have been vaping for longer going back to 50/50. So it won't be like two extremes. So you've got people like Nick Salts, Pod Systems, that's really that's what's happened. And yeah. then you've got like 200 watt 
and TFB12 prints. Well, what's Stooges happened is, like in, well. in America, because again, the vaping industry seems to follow what what America are doing. See, America sneezes, we catch uh, we catch the hiv. <laughs> yes, yes, we catch the what? Sorry, the, uh, a cold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's the, the phrase I'm familiar with. Um, but yeah, so that, they're quite into their Nick salts. Now, in my opinion, the way under the, the current TPD, I think Nick salts are a fad because we're, well, the maximum we're allowed is 20 milligrams. And for people that don't really know a lot about Nick salts, um, compared to free base, which is like your normal nicotine, um, 72 it, it's, it's absorbed a lot quicker into your bloodstream. Yeah. So if you've got a 20 milligram Nixalt product and you was a 20 milligram free base vapor, it's not even going to touch the sides. But well, America's at 15, I mean, we, we, we're, 60. 60. Yeah, we, 15, we went over to San Francisco. And Fred I was buying was, um, naked 50 milligrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah loving that. Nautilus all in one. Yeah, that, that hits amazing. the spot, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Smashing bottle after bottle. We're only there for four days. <laughs> <laughs> so so what, what's happening here is... I'm having anxiety attacks from vaping that <laughs> Yeah, you do, don't you? <laughs> you have to, I, I find like... Um, the CBD afterwards. <laughs> when, it, when it first comes out, it's like... You vape the Nixo and it's like, there's a chair, you, yeah. might, you might need that in a minute. It's um, incre- that's why things like the dual pods have worked well out there, because you can get a huge hit of nicotine. It's because the wattage output is so low that 50 milligrams, it still feels like you're getting a substantial throat hit, whereas if you have 20 milligrams in... There's zero like, throat hit, Yes, yeah, it? it's not there, it's not present at all. It's, it's, I've noticed people are doing... Um, uh, should, should I mention other brands here? Um, Go for it. Feel free. What, We're brand friendly. What, what's that, what's that company at the moment? And they sell you buy you buy the liquids, and then they give you a, a Nick Salt shot that goes with it. It's one of the. I think it might be a UK brand. It's quite a few of them that do it. Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, you're getting a 20 milligram shot. You're adding it to a 60 mil product. Yeah. Then it's a three milligram. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so you might as well, if if you want nicotine, you might as well just eat a potato or something. You'll probably get more nicotine. Out of it, <laughs> That's a new thing. Earlier, first we're going to start stocking these on the wholesale side as well. Potatoes. Well, so Walter Riley, you just bring back tobacco. Fuck Walter Riley. Well, you brought back potatoes. We can't go wrong with that. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> do you, are you going to look at Nick Salt yourself, Greeny Heath? Um, crikey, I need to be careful what I say here. I am not sold on nicotine salts. Okay. I don't know if I agree with how they work. That's fair enough. I mean, look, it's about, it's about being credible with your I brain. don't like, and again, this is all hearsay. For me, vaping is harm reduction. Yep. Um, the whole thing with Grinny Heaths when I kicked off, and that was the other reason why I set up my brand, because the American juice was so sweet at the time. And the whole point behind Grinny Heaths was to give you a good flavour without saturating it in sugar and burning your coal out of intent. Yeah, it's true. American liquids are known for that. They've exactly. got a different palette, haven't they, in America? And, and it's the same thing with the Nick Salts. It's, for me, it's harm reduction. Now, a 30, 60 milligram Nick Salt product, there's research that suggests it can dramatically raise your blood pressure. Sure. So a lot of people come off cigarettes onto vaping obviously for health purposes yep so imagine you're a 70 year old 70 year old man you've, you've smoked all your life and and if you're coming off and you're a 30 day smoker if you're coming off you're going to need a high nicotine product obviously so you've I got agree. a pod device and say you've got in america 30 or even a 20 milligram nick salt product if it's showing that it raises blood pressure do i really want to be responsible and am i harm redu- reducing if that man has high blood pressure and Cause them to be ill. That's fair enough. Do you um, just going way off the topic now as well? Mm. Um, back to we're talking about fifty fifties. Um, mm. You see that somewhere in area you're going to be going into at all, trying to get more back into sort of the mouth to lung. Well, that, that's device. it. So w- what's happening is you've got the pod systems have come over with the the Nick salts from America. Yep. A lot of people don't rate the salts because again, twenty milligram, you're not getting that that throat hit. Um, so I, in terms of trends and predictions, I think that possibly. We could see a return of 50-50 liquids. Grinny's in the 50s. Grinny in the 50s. So what, what, what have you got in your hand there, David? Um, I have a Lost Vape mod, a little, a little pod kit. It's a Orion. And it's a, Orion. There you go. I know my stuff clearly. In not. that is um, uh, one of my signature flavours, uh, Slinging the Benson down Liverpool Street. It's nice. Which is a, it's a, it's a classic RY4, brought up to date with bourbon and <laughs> cans. And, it's uh, a nice tobacco. I mean, look, I mean I, I've only recently got, I mean, Fred vapes a lot of tobacco flavours. Uh, I quite like the B&L flavour. This is nice. This is more of a desserty tobacco. Yeah, totally. And and what I've done there is that's a 50-50 That sounds product. like a shameless plug, but it is actually, I mean, we've been one of our biggest sellers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, People have always asked us, have you got any premium tobaccos in the shops? And they do sell really well. And so it's Grinny Heath's Slinger Benson. It's, and so this is 50-50, is it? it that, that is a 50-50 12 milligram that will be, that will be coming out in a 10 mil TPD. Excellent. Fantastic stuff. How uh, long do you reckon that'll be? Watch this out. Yeah. 
Um, I need to speak to the finances and find out what's going on. But the I finance department? Yeah, it, it shouldn't be too long. Fair so enough. I think we're going to launch it with a 6 and a 12, and okay. then the 18 will follow. Superb. Um, just so, to, Green Heath, what's the, what's the origin behind the name Green Heath? We, we, so for those who, we've known we've known Steve, uh, Steve Gervan, who runs it for, for a number of years now, he was a customer of ours. He hasn't really given f- full credit to his story. So he used to be a customer of our shop in Colchester, come and bought liquids, then thought, I could give this a go, make them myself. Mm. Uh, he did make them. The guys loved his nut custard, uh, which is a liquid, not anything else, uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> and, a bit uh, of love goes into every bottle. And I remember, the, I remember the first time I was up in Colchester, he happened to be there. No, no, I'm, no, you, it wasn't actually. Actually, Dave, it was um, a lot of people had, had, had spoken about why don't I do it and sell it, and then Rob was like, "I'll get my my Rob was the manager of." So yeah, so Rob's the guy who brought beers over to us shortly a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's a manager of the Colchester branch at the time, and um, he said, "I'll get my my boss to come down." And the, the the funny thing is, I actually met another vape chain, well, not even a chain, just a, a, another shop that morning. And then Charlatans. I, had, I had a little meeting with them, and then I went. Charlatan Vapeco. And, Bateco. and the thing, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, like uh, me and you, rapport was there, so it wasn't. You know, like, I was like, yes, yeah, is a guy I could do business with. I like, I like him. Um, you like the products. I think, in fact, I think you had a little, uh, little hard on for my banana back then. I did, yeah. So Grinny used to do a uh, called Grinny still. I can't kind of name works well for you, doesn't it? Really, but we. Yeah, I've. I've oh, that's, he had a banana custard, which is. Is that a banana in your? Pocket? Is that a banana in your pocket? Loved it. Really nice liquid. Tasted. Ri- I can't remember what the, it was like. Um, it was. It wasn't just a banana custard. It was a banana custard pudding. It was lovely. Which is coming back actually, isn't it? Um, yeah, it is. Good. Um, and the um, orange popsicles on. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Grinny's orange popsicles. Yeah. So, so where's the origin of the name Grinny Heaths? Oh, I don't know. If I'm, just, so. <laughs> this sounds like it's the, not going to be suitable for work. No, no. The plan behind Grinny Heaths was NSFW um, report. It was, it, Good quality ingredients, yep. little bit of love gone into it, a premium product. It wasn't aimed at somebody that wants to vape 100 mil a day unless you've got some money in your pocket. Yep. So it's more like a treat liquid, not saying that, you know. Um, so I, I thought it needs like that prestigious name and I thought Grinny Heaths was sounding pretty good. I'm, I'm sidestepping around and I'm trying to... Anyway, so the, the, the origin of the story is, at the time I was living in a place called Parsons Heath. And it had a, I had a brook in my garden. Right. And this brook ran from Parsons Heath to um, a council estate up the road called Greenstead, which um, the nickname is Grinny. Right. And I also happened to grow up there as well. And um, I thought, if you put the Grinny with the Heath... Um, there you go. So, yeah, uh, humble beginnings. Damn right, yeah. That's what we like. I mean, look, you said the phrase yourself, like, we do business with people we like. Mm. I think that's the same for any business. It's important to have people who've got similar values to you. Um, I'm happy to have you in my kitchen. Yep. So shows you <laughs> to be here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's basically a um, an adopted member of the company, really. Yeah. No, I, I, the thing is as well. Um, yes, you are a client, but I uh, I've even used uh, this terminology before. I said, Dave, if you if you cut me open, the like the greeny heaps are pour out of that arm. And if you cut the other arm, vapor juice would come flying out. I feel oh, I feel I'll part of the family. I feel oh. part of. Um, because you know it, it is a family. Yes, you've you've grown. You've got a few shops now, but I've got so many good friends within the company. Even like, I even like Fred, who I'm sitting next to, <laughs> she's, which is a rare thing. Which so, is, so <laughs> Fr- Fred's the operations director of Vape and Juice, and he's basically the man who does the has the conversations that I can't really have. <laughs> All people are like me, see. I'm happy. He's the Fred. margins man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the margins. Oh, yes, he likes his margins. I do like my margins. So, spreadsheets. and also um, one of the things, any spreadsheets. One of the things that, um, just going away from, from Elix at the moment, one of the things that um, I know that we're doing in April, we're going to go and do the uh, a tour of Sri Lanka in a Tuk Tuk. Um, yeah. Which are raising money for, for cancer charities, which is a, a charity that means a lot to me. We're doing a uh, eSports, which is gaming, um, eSports charity vape event. and. So, was, sorry, so, so did you say April? We're, we're rearranging for April. We're doing it April, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Make sure that's correct. Don't yeah, give, give me some dates. No, so I can get that's it fine. In. Don't worry, I'll sort your yeah. flights out for that. Um, and uh, we're doing an eSports charity event, and Grinny's one of the first names down there to be doing the uh, do the charity fundraiser we're going to get a load of liquids we're going to auction them off charity raffles charity auctions going to be using a couple of facebook groups like vstc the home of friendly vapors to uh, to to run that um and uh, i'm pleased to announce that green heath's going to be at the gaming contest and also uh doozy vapes as well they put their names down today and vape distribution as well so uh good. already got some names good down company. there yep and english uh, brands yes Exactly. And I think that's it's interesting because your story is very similar to Doozy Vapes. I was speaking to Imran, who's the CEO of, of Doozy Vapes yesterday, and he himself was someone who 
didn't have a lot of money in his pocket and started making his own e-liquids and thought oh, I can do a, do a decent job of this and uh, it's nice to, to hear those non-corporate stories so um, yeah it's it certainly um, it, it did come from humble beginnings and, and I did uh, it, it came initially when the TPD was talked about there, there was like the early words around a campfire was you're looking at half a million pounds to go through TPD and then and then as it sort of became a bit more clearer it was it's going to be x amount so at the time I'd, I'd worked hard to build up a decorating company i'd come away from the tools myself at the time and i was you know sort of running it if you like then i was and the, the funny thing is in fact i've uh, i've kept a bit of um tablecloth from where i was literally running a company so i was, I was painting like eight till four in the daytime i was running the painting company with my children, you know, getting them to bed and then doing a couple of hours. So getting them to paint as well. Getting my kids to paint. And, and then I was like working on flavours till like two o'clock in the morning. Classic side hustle. Yeah, it was it was ridiculous. Um, and then CPD come along, I went through it, um, and I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I might as well have just wanked fifty grand into. into See, that's the thing is, I hear from a lot of people, the people who spent companies who spent a lot of money on doing, um, um, making their liquids TPD compliant. And it's not cheap, you know. Don't get me wrong. I, I was, I was, because I did things to the book. You know, I, I was, I was careful of what ingredients I used, um, what the government have latched onto in terms of diacetyl. I don't know. I don't use it, but do I think there's a big problem there? Not so sure. A popcorn lung I'm, thing. I'm more, yeah, that's. I mean, who's ever heard of someone dying of popcorn lung? Like, oh, Uncle Jack uh, smoked all his life yeah. and got popcorn lung. Yeah, it's. Um, not, again, not that I don't not to, not to sort of dismiss that idea. No, no. And no. we certainly don't necessarily put diacetyls in our liquids, but it's it's. Yeah. It's but I'm more concerned about other things, yeah. you know, like, like certain types of sugar that are used. You yeah. know, if you look at a coil and you vape to juice for a day, and your coil and cotton's gone black, is that any good in your lungs? Yeah, that's true. You're caramelising a sugar. Do you want that in there? You know, mm. so I'm more concerned with that side of things. Where do you see the industry going in the next couple of years in terms of where can you can you still see the vape shop working, or do you see it going a lot more sort of? Poundland liquids, or do you think this is going to be a place for a premium product still? Hundred percent, and that, that's what I'm hoping. Like we've since TPD's come out, and I keep going back to it, but this has like been the turning point for everything. Um, since that came out, a lot of people sidestepped and they went down the the short fill route. Again, no problem with that. I short fill now. I've, I, you know, I'm not taking anything away from that. But um, the, the problem is, I was up for regulation. Um, do I agree with the tanks and the bottle size? No. Um, do I think short fields are fine? Yes. But what's happened since, the, 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 the sale cost of liquid has been halved. What I'm hoping is that where we've had the, val the, the, the liquid devalued and people are having to use cheaper ingredients, um, it's been around for a while now and I think people are starting to catch up now that this cheap tasting liquid is exactly that. You pay, you know, and I, I'm one for everyone. If you're on a budget and you, and you want some cheap liquid, you go and buy some cheap liquid. Yeah. If, but the problem is, it's being punted out at expensive prices yep. still. So what we've got now is we've got everyone using the same cheap ingredients, but because of the shitty rip-off branding, they're commanding uh, a premium for it. So I'd like to, as a manufacturer, um, I'd, I would like to see a bit more money coming back to the manufacturers, the ones that are putting the innovation in. Because, you know, it, it's got so cheaper now that if everyone's selling liquid for so cheap, where's the innovation? There yeah, is true. no innovation. You can only, the thing is, you can only imitate so far, isn't it? Yeah. That they need people like yourselves to innovate new products so they can even imitate themselves anyway. It, it's a sad thing. Like, I'm launching a new brand at the moment. I've had to be really careful. Like, there's certain brands of flavouring from Micro House that I'd love to use, but I can't use them in this particular range because it just pushed the overhead too much. Yeah, and it's just... And, I think and, that, that goes back to the whole thing, is not all e-liquids are made the same, are they? No, not I true. think that's, that's very true, and I think it's... I mean, you've only got to go down to a wine shop, haven't you, like an off-license, and you can you can get a bottle of Chateauneuf de Pap, uh, which is going to be, what, 15, 16 pounds, or you can get a bottle of Lamborghini bottle for a few quid. Chateauneuf de, de Pap for 16 pounds? Where are you from? <laughs> Where I'm from, it's good bottles, 30 pounds. <laughs> Aldi do their own one now as well. They're not too bad, actually, yeah. to be fair. It's bateau nerf to dap. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, look, we're going to cut this short now, but um, I just want to thank uh, for those guys for listening. Um, there aren't many um, uh, e-liquid companies who've definitely put their, their sort of their hat in the ring to come on the show mm -hmm. straight away. Grinny's done it, or Steve done it. Thank you very much for coming on the show. Um, I don't think there's anything else. If you've got any comments or any questions you want to ask uh, Grinny or ask Vape and Juice, put your comments below or chuck us a message on our Instagram at Vape and Juice UK. Hope you found this uh, this podcast interesting. And if you run a vape business and you want to come on and talk about your brands and your origin story, we'd love to have you. So that's the Cotton and Cantle Show. Join us again and check us out at Vape and Juice TV on YouTube.
Thank you.